What's up guys, Mike here, and welcome to the second episode of Just The Tip Tuesday, where I give you just the tip. So today's episode is about video analysis. You guys should be filming yourself, and not when you're beating off, when you're kite surfing. Just The Tip Tuesday. <laughs> Guys, it's so valuable for so many sports because you can see what you're doing wrong and where there's room for improvement. I do video analysis all the time when I'm coaching and it helps so much. So let's check out some clips and see what we can learn from them. All right, sweet, great angle here. So we've got a back roll, kite loop, late back roll, and another back roll, and I eat it. Cool, so back roll, takeoff's looking good. Laid back looks good. Boom, here's the problem. So as I'm swinging under the kite, you'll see that the kite is above me. So if I wanna pull this loop, the loop has nowhere to go but over to the side. So what I should have done as I swung under it is I should have left the kite over to the right here. That way this loop would happen above me, giving me vertical lift and helping me land smoothly. So let's see what happens. Kai goes over to the side. I see that I'm about to eat it. So I stop pulling the loop and yeah, nice. So next time after I come out of the late back roll, I need to steer a little bit extra with my back hand, with my right hand to leave the kite over to the right. All right, cool, nice boogie loop, added rotation, and I eat it, lovely. Cool, so boogie's looking good. It's added rotation looks smooth, and then boom, here's the problem. You'll see that the kite, if we're looking at it side on, you'll see that the kite is once more right above me, when actually I want the kite to be upwind. Because the kite is right above me, if I'm gonna steer hard with the front hand, AKA, pull a loop in this instance, that loop has nowhere to go but downwind. So I've come in fast and I'm about to send my kite back into the window where it's going to give me a lot more forward speed. That's the last thing you want when you're swinging backwards under your kite and you're already going fast. So watch this fast landing. Boom. So next time, I need to wait a little bit longer at this point until the kite has gone upwind and I should pull it about there, I should start pulling it. Here are some ideas for how you can film your kiting. You can put a camera like a GoPro on a tripod or a monopod and just leave it set up and do your tricks in front of the camera. Yes. I nice. send it. Loop it, loop it, loop it. Yes. Good thing you got that one on video. I want you to to leave it further right when you swing under. If you want to take things up a notch, you could even film with a 360 camera like the GoPro Hero Max or an Insta 360X too. I recently used a 360 camera with my buddy who I was coaching in Hatteras and it was super cool. We were able to do our tricks and as you're doing your trick, you can move around the view to catch guys that would normally have been out of frame. Just absolutely incredible. I'm definitely gonna be getting one pretty soon. You can also shoot with a follow cam where someone else rides behind you. Obviously great to film from the beach with a really good camera but we don't always have friends who can film and we also don't necessarily have good enough camera gear but honestly phone cameras are so good these days check out this 4k video that was shot in Cape Town so the creme de la creme is drone footage with drone footage you can see the whole picture you can see where the kites moving what the rider is doing if you use a DJI Mavic 2 Pro like I do then you can set up active track where you select the rider on the screen and as the rider is moving the drone will move with the rider all right so camera settings i like to shoot in a really high frame rate so like 120 fps or even 240 fps that way i can slow things down and see exactly where the problems are happening 
So generally speaking, you've got a trade-off between high resolution and high frame rate. Normally you can't shoot in a crazy high resolution and a crazy high frame rate. So if I'm far away from a rider, I'll shoot in 2.7 or 4K, and that way I can crop in later. But if I'm close enough to the rider, then I'm gonna shoot in 1080p with 240 FPS and get those super sick slow-mo shots. So guys, if you wanna get video coaching from me, you can follow the link in the description down below. I've been doing it with a couple guys over the past year, and I've gotta say it's really effective. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've got any comments, just drop them in the comments. Please be sure to give this video a like. And of course, if you wanna see more videos like this, then please be sure to subscribe.